Dann kommen wir jetzt zum äh, Vortrag von Sebastian van Loo. Uh, we, he will uh, help his uh, presentation in English. Uh, Sebastian van Loo is working as a project manager for the Data Bay AG. He is responsible for various uh, e-learning and software development projects. And additionally, he is uh, teaching administrators, lectures and users of ELIAS. Uh, he will show us um, the eScript uh, plugin to uh, correcting exercises. Um, and the idea of the um, plugin is um, we use the PDF format. And the PDF uh, stand as a great way to share and distribute information for any author. Um, for a lecture, working uh, in a given correction scenario, on the other hand, a possible download, it, editing of a PDF, and an upload of an uh, edited PDF uh, is quite time-consuming way and additional not a standard feature of the Acrobat Reader. So he will show us his plugin, which uh, new, is a new way to deal with this scenario. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Dennis. Um, yeah, I'm going to start off. Um, this plugin is embedded into the Elias exercise. So it's uh, not a standalone plugin. And initially, we thought of this plugin as um, an independent repository object. Um, but in the course of the development, um, we found out for us, so to speak, um, that there are the exercise is a great um, setting for this plugin because um, the Elias exercise offers um, many features um, where authors, um, for example, students and lecturers as tutors can work together. Um, for example, publishing deadlines, the submission and grades tab, and the evaluation uh, feedback process. So. Um, we will find out um, in the course of the, the live presentation I'm going to show you now um, that um, the exercise is a great way to organize uh, the work between an author um, and a lecturer. So I'm just going to jump in right into the live demonstration before we um, finish off with a discussion. And I just have to jump in here. And I'm going to take now the view of a regular user um, who has just been um, assigned to the following exercise we see here. So this is a, a regular exercise, and I'm a regular student or author, and I'm opening now this exercise, and I can now hand in my submission, which is obviously a PDF file. Um, Before, I'm going to show you the, the PDF file. You see it here. Um, the PDF file consists of five pages. Oh, it's just a demonstration document. And I'm going to upload this document here. I'm just going to hand it in. Second. And now I've, for the, for the first part, I've done my dues um, uh, as a student. And now I change the perspective um, to a lecturer or a tutor in the corresponding exercise. So I'm going to change here now to the lecturer. So we see the, the same exercise here, just with a different user. And um, I activate it here. I'm just going to show it to you. Um, this is activated by default, this so called eScript correction mode. And since I have activated this um, correction mode, I can see now um, the corrections tab. I'm just going to jump over. Um, the corrections tab here is visible because I also um, have the right to see the submission and grades tab. So this is basically the, the connection um, within the exercise. So um, I'm just going to show you now. 
submission grades and I see now the so far not graded submission of the student or the author. And now I'm just going to jump into the correction tab and I see the, the PDF document and I um, see that this is at the moment unassigned. So um, we're, we're going to talk about the underlying process um, later on. And so far, I'm just going to take over now this document. So I go to the Actions tab and I perform the correction. This means in the momentary setting that this submission is blocked for other correctors in the exercise. Um, so now I see again the PDF document I showed you initially, which has been supposedly created by the student. And I can here scroll through the, the document and I can also jump between pages. Oh, I have a cover sheet. I can jump to, for example, page two um, and roll back to the starting page. Um, now this document f still feels like the PDF, but it, is, um, it has been transformed into a graphical object. So now I can perform um, typical, yeah, markings. Um, I'm going to stray. I'm going to demonstrate now. For example, I can. I'm going to start off with an with a red underline. I can underline things in red, for example. Um, I can also increase the size in case I would like to highlight certain parts. I can highlight this here and highlight also other aspects of this um, document. Um, I also have um, the possibility to use stamps. These are um, basically standard stamps I can use. Again, I can manipulate the size of the stamps. I'm going to use the, the large stamps and I can actually then mark certain things, for example, as correct or as incorrect. I can use also lightning bolts. I'm just going to done finishing um, correcting this page and I move on to the, to the second page. Um, I also have the possibilities to use, for example, the smileys, um, sad smileys, smiling smileys, um, lightning bolts, and exclamation marks. So these are some, some markers I can use. And if I like to, I can also use custom markers. So I'm going to insert here a custom marker. I'm going to select JPEG and going to place it at the position I would like to put the marker. So these are um, basic ways in order to, yeah, leave leave marks or leave leave traces in the document. Um, you can also, of course, use um, the. You can also comment. Or pose questions. So I'm gonna move again to the, to the next page just to have um, a little sequ sequential order and I'm gonna post a comment here for example and then save the comment. Um, what I can do too is, of course, I can edit this comment. I'm just going to use this, copy my initial comment. And I can also add private comments. So if I deactivate the public checkbox, I can then also um, insert a private comment. The difference between these comments is these type of comments will not be feedback to the student um, once I 
um, use the, 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 the feedback process of the exercise. And um, yeah, so here we are then in the, in the comment and I see um, a first question um, from, from uh, Ms. Michelle Geschwede. Hello, <laughs> uh, at this point. Um, yeah, at this point, you would have, you would need to um, upload those stamps, those individual stamps um, all the time. Um, yeah, you, there, there is no history that you could use this icon. Um, like when I use this database custom icon here, it's not going to be shown in the stamps list. Um, this might be a, a useful enhancement. Um, yeah, the, the editing process, um, which is the question of, of Mr. Senker, I would like to um, postpone this for, for a second because this will also lead us um, to possible future developments. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna run through um, the comment section. We were, um, at the moment, we, we um, talked about the general text comments and um, the possible differentiation between um, a public comment for the students who's the intended recipients of the correction and a private comment just for the lecturer um, for his own yeah, um, overview. And what we do have also um, is we can also add in a formula. So I'm going to insert a formula. I prepared some formulas. Um, so I'm going to insert, for example, a fraction formula. And I can also insert, of course, other formulas. Um, please don't ask me about the actual calculation behind the formulas. I just want to demonstrate <laughs> some some possible um, features of the solution. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna use a third formula just to have things um, shown all together. And I could use also, of course I can, if I like to, I can also combine certain formulas. Um, but please be aware that in order to use this formula, you have to have um, the math JAX server in Elias has to be activated. And there are certain differences between math JAX and the regular la LaTeX. So there are possible cases in which this formula um, is not going to be shown properly. So it's not going to be detected as a formula. Um, but of course, in my presentation, um, my formulas get detected, luckily. Um, yeah, and then um, we also have um, the possibility to upload complete correctional pages. Uh, so we have the last option here is the correctional page. I would like to show it now. Uh, so here we are. Um, from a navigation point of view, it's very simple. The, 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 the principle is very simple. Whenever there's more than 50% of the page shown, all the markings and the comments get basically assigned to this page. Huh? And what, once we move up more than 50% of the page or we see more than 50% of the following page, then um, the markings and all the comments get assigned to the following page. And um, yeah, what I'm going to show now is just um, to insert a correctional picture. I chose one picture you might be familiar with. It's shown beneath here. Um, so this is a complete picture I can have and use. And now um, I would um, just take a look, uh, just a second, at the question. Um, from Mr. Tsenka. Um, so, yeah, the, 
the the graphical objects the editing of the graphical objects is is one of the the future developments so i'm going to touch into some form of rollback um so i'm going to move to the first page and and roll back so so here what i can do is i have limited to the page i'm seeing i can either discard all the changes for example with highlights or i can roll back stepwise the problem is that I can only go um, in a in a in a yeah in a direct chrono in a direct timeline. So when I roll back, the first thing that gets away is this one, and then the the other markers following are following. I'm I work from the bottom from the top to the bottom, so you see those get discarded, and I can also delete, of course, all the markings on the page. So the editing is um, basically um, possible, but um, yeah, um, with respect to um, the, the movement of those objects, um, I cannot move um, those, those objects here. So I can delete here all, and the, the question of, of uh, Mr. Senko was more put here to the markers. Um, again, with the markers, I can roll back stepwise. Unfortunately, I can only go back one step at a time, but I cannot move those, um, or I can delete all of those comments. Yeah. Um, so, and of course, with the correctional picture, I can also here delete this correctional picture too, if I like. Um, yeah, and now once I've, I've, I'm done with my correction process, I can now use one of those features in the exercise. So I can now um, give an evaluation. So I'm going to jump here to the Verto, and I can um, now give my evaluation. Of course, I'm going to be positive. I tell the test user that he has um, passed this assignment. I give him um, uh, I give myself uh, a note and I give a nice test text feedback if I like to. And then I'm just going to save this evaluation. So now that I'm done correcting the exercise, I'm going to save and um, close the process. And I see I have to hurry up a little bit, so we have enough um, time for the discussion. And now I go back and I see in the submission and grades tab the evaluation. And I can now choose here. Um, I have to one one thing. Um, I have to now release the correct correction. So now all the changes I made in the document gets uh, get transferred into the correctional document. And I go back here from the perspective of a of a lecturer. I can look now at this corrected file, which I download now. And I open it, and I see the remarks, the stems, the underlines were those that I <laughs> rolled back, so we're not going to see those at the moment. But I see the, the comments. Um, I'm not going to see the private comments, and I see the, the formulas here, and of course, the correction page. And um, just to close, to give the whole view, the student here has now had a very fast correction <laughs> of his exercise um, within minutes. And he can also now download this correction file here. Um, and this is going to be exact the same file that the lecturer or the tutor is seeing too. Um, so this is for the part, the, the live demonstration. And um, yeah, in the this, we already had some points where we would say, um, yeah, these are possible future developments. Um, I'm going to start off 
again with a presentation. Um, we have a, um, um, a call for crowdfunding. Um, we would like to have this available as an Elias uh, 9 open source plugin with all the features and to integrate the eScript engine completely into Elias. Um, the solution we have, um, I showed you now, is um, yeah, is available for Elias 5.4, Elias 6, and also for Elias 7. Um, I've created um, a feature wiki, um, so you can also reread all the features or after this presentation. And of course, um, referring to the platform where I've just been active, you can also try the correction process um, on your own if you like. This um, platform is open for self-registration and once you've self-registered with your email address, you can then create a category and within the category um, exercises using the eScript correction mode. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, we have many possible future developments. Um, of course, Eduteek is, is um, one of the, the major possible ways we um, we could um, use this A script. Um, there are a lot of possible settings um, in the in the exercise. So what I showed in the beginning that the exercise is blocked is, for example, one one setting that other um, that is not good for other use cases, um, and also the limitation um, to um, picture uploads maybe. We could um, integrate another PDF that is uh, possible to upload as a correction page, or as already mentioned um, in the presentation, that you have a history of your custom stamps. Those are all possible, yeah, um, yeah, enhancements um, of this plugin. Um, yeah, again, um, as already yeah pointed out, the individual editing of comments and stamps is um, yeah possible but limited um, we also have in the in the um, practical work found out that there are um, problems when you put in too long comments or too many comments on the correction page so um, this is one of the things there where you might want to have um, some sort of smart comment limitations or yeah um, yeah a possible automatic way of enlarging your corrective files. Um, of course, there are a lot of new interactive use cases, which is basically a little bit redund redundant to the point, flexible settings in the exercise in eScript. But there are a lot of cases and objects where we could use this project, um, this this object or this plugin. And um, yeah, last but not least, um, with respect to the exercises, there might be um, a lot of features that uh, are very useful for um, the lecturers. Uh, for example, download all um, correctional um, uh, corrected PDFs or release all col um, corrections in a bunch. Um, so to have more of an automatic way of dealing with um, documents. Um, yeah, in, in this exercise. Yeah, um, so I'm basically done with my presentation and I would like especially um, thank also the um, Dual Hochschule Baden-Württemberg and um, also the Theologie im Fernkurs. Um, those were partners that we um, made the first steps with this plugin and um, at this um, point I would um, Really like to thank them a lot for for um, for the many many hours of thinking and working and um, also uh, debugging this um, plugin. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you then, for I your guess, talk. Yeah. We have uh, many questions in the chat. Okay. Um, Miga and ask: Is it possible to randomly distribute the submissions to different tutors who are supposed to correct? Yes, in 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 this um, in this solution, um, you can have as many correctors as as you like. So it's it's um, kind of like a um, kiosk mode. 
So if you have um, a lot of lecturers, they can actually choose the submission. But once they've chosen the submission of one user, for example, here, the test user, then the submission of this test user is blocked. And basically, he is then kind of locked in with this lecturer. And also, if the test user is then again re-uploading another solution, um, he is still bounded with a lecturer. And um, this is basically the one setting we are um, enabling here um, with this plug plugin in the standard. So I hope this um, fits your <laughs> process <laughs> as well. Yeah. So we have a question from Dietmar. What happens with the original document? Will this still be able somewhere? Um, yes, that's a good question. This is still be able as submission. Let me just double check before I can here download all submissions. So this is where the, it's quite useful. Now we have the background task. And here I'm looking at the background task. And now I still have the basic document available. So um, this is again the the, um, the the strong point of the Elias exercise. That is a great foundation where we actually are, um, yeah, working with or working upon, so to speak. So the next question is um, from Miriam. Will the private comments in the file then be lost um, yes in the in the file you submit those comments will be lost um, if you would like to see them again um, you would then here need to open the correction of course this correction is now released but I still can reopen the co correction again again this is also a possible setting where some people say this is not the way we want to use this plugin. Um, so what I found is when you have um, two partners, you basically, or um, yeah, when you have um, two people in the room, you have three or four different opinions or, or possible settings that they would like to use. And especially within also one university, you have also very, um, yeah, differing use cases. So um, when I look here, I go back to the comments and I still see the private comment here. Um, but um, with respect to the PDF that gets resubmitted to the student um, or is available to the lecturer, um, it's basically, uh, yeah, it's only available online and it's lost. <laughs> okay, then uh, Edith asks, in the generated PDF, the formula expressions are very different in size. Is it possible to make them more uniform? Um, yeah, that's also um, a, a, one of the things um, that also um, the, the DRBV uh, pointed out. Um, the thing is, when we start off writing the formulas, we don't know how long the formula is going to be. And so um, this is one of the, the things where the, the plugin um, is, um, yeah, is open for... Um, yeah, for an enhancement, or um, but at the moment it's technically not possible to to change the size. Um, yeah, in in a flexible way. Okay, the next question is uh, the sample file was PDF. Also goes uh, Word, LaTeX, or Excel? I don't think so. No, um, at the moment um, the we we are only limited to to PDF files. And we are basically bound to the scenarios um, that I just presented. So if you want to correct with um, the markers or the correctional pages, you would need to have a picture. And um, yeah, this is basically one of the, um, um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the weak points, so to speak, or the, the possible, um, we are basically bound to this one setting or the one scenario. Of course, we um, are also able to yeah, to um, 
to incorporate different settings, but with respect to the general eScript function, this is at the moment not possible. Okay. Um, the next question is from uh, Lena. How about making the corrections accessible? Is it just a graphic? Barrierefrei. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's um, that's a point um, where we are currently working on. So um, yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's a good point, and and it's um, yeah, it's under construction. Uh, can she ask? Are there any plans to track the correction process? Um, could you just repeat, Dennis? Um, are there any? Plans to track the correction process. Plans? I don't really understand the plans. I plans. Yeah. Maybe in German now. I... Plans. A plan. ja, ob, ob ihr plant, uh, irgendwie uh, den Korrekturprozess uh, zu tracken, also wer was wann wie eingetragen hat, also eine Historie. Um, Timeline. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the the thing is, um, we what what um, is being tracked is who has corrected the PDF. So, um, if you are here again, I show you the the corrected document. Um, um, you can here see who's who has corrected. Um, this um, this file. So this is basically gets gets set in into the correction file, and um, but we don't. The the underlying um, assumption is that you actually um, have um, worked out who's who's have who has access um, to the exercise, just like in in any regular Ilya scenario by the Airbag, um, um, yeah. Um, principle. So you would say, okay, well, this exercise can be accessed by this person, and this exercise can be accessed by this person. Um, so there is some form of, um, yeah, general tracking. So you leave a fingerprint if you comment here, um, and the rest is basically um, uh, just embedded in the in the regular Elias context. As a special formal question from Edith, maybe you can read it yes, yourself. Um, exactly. Um, we have um, looked out to this issue, and um, I also have here with a with a formula. There is a page. Um, this is also um, I also have refer ref referenced to in the feature wiki. So here's the the feature wiki. Um, um, and here you can see the differences between MathJax and LaTeX. So these are one of the things that um, help us to understand when the function is actually not working and when it is functionally working. Um, the difference is actually the problem is in the MathJax server that the MathJax server um, does not understand certain late LaTeX formulas. So this argument, um, this uh, document is also linked in the feature wiki, and this might help, um, yeah, from a from a mathematical point of view. So, yeah, okay, it, um, it does not solve the problem yet, but it <laughs> explains the uh, the uh, yeah uh, the reason why there are some sometimes problems with LaTeX. So thanks again for your presentation. I think we have uh, answered all yeah. questions.